It's a lovely day in the neighborhood. If you like the message of this channel, you like the content, and you will, go ahead and hit that button and make a donation. With that, I have a question for you. Are you ready to be successful? Not that you want to be successful. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to be thinner. Everyone wants and wants and wants. A want is woefully insufficient if you're not prepared. That's like wanting to uh, run a marathon, but you never run. You can want all day long, but it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. So let's discuss this because I had a very interesting conversation with someone lately. And they want to start a business. And I, I've heard all these excuses and I've heard all these excuses. And we're going on two years now of wanting to do this. Of, you know, it has to be just right. Then it hit me. This person is not prepared to be successful. It has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with abilities and resources. They're simply not prepared for the responsibility of being successful because success comes with a price. Success has many different levels of payment and obligation and things that are incumbent upon you once you become successful. These things are, for many people, they're just beyond what they want to put out. And I think that's what the deal is with my friend because everything's lined up. It's just getting to that space, getting to that level of personal responsibility. That is the tricky part that is the that's where things start to come apart that's where the you know the road gets a little rough and rugged and i thought about that and i thought about it and that's one of the reasons there's this course in the hustlers university mentally becoming the boss it's only going to be in hustlers university it's not going to be anywhere else because i really decided there will be unique special content only part of hustlers university and we speak to that because I've seen comments on the channel over the years and people like, hey, you know, I don't need to hear about the mental game. Let me tell you something. Without the mental game, the physical game's not going to happen. Or if it happens, you won't keep it. So many people are trying to get past that step of toughening up mentally, being an owner, having an ownership mentality, and just hopefully looking for what I call the passive inter internet income paradigm. You don't really work that hard. You get to spend all day with your wife and kids, or if you're, you know, you're the woman that's running the business, you get to spend all day with your kids and husband. You work four hours a week. You, you're making six figures, and you get to post all of these wonderful pictures of you in London, Amsterdam, Tahiti, with the kids, and everyone's happy and smiling because. You are living that internet lifestyle. <laughs> and it is a facade in many cases. I was able to do it when the, I wrote the first book and then the shows came on and everything took off. I was able to do that for a little while. But I knew that that was not going to be forever. And I made preparations for that. I'm so glad I did. Because when it dropped off, it was like a cliff. Boom. And that, that's one of the things that happens. So if you're looking for internet paradigm, you're in Amsterdam. Now, I will say this. Say you start an internet business, and this is more of the reality. And you're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And your internet business is like mine, content creation or services, you provide services, or you have enough of a system where you can direct your team regardless of where you are. You do open up a ton of freedom in that regard, where you could be in London and taking the pictures and smiling, and then after being out in London, 
for the day or, you know, just pin, you go back home and you, you know, go back to your hotel and you work for two or three hours. That, it's very possible. But in the beginning, there will be a lot of heavy lifting. And I think that is the thing because when I wrote my first book, I didn't make any money for six, seven months. Seriously. Between right, no, didn't make any money, didn't make a dime. And there are many of you that if you go like a month and it ain't working, you're out. It's like, hey, this shit's gotta work. This shit must work. Mm, no, it doesn't. And that's part of the preparation of you know, becoming successful. You, you have to prepare. You have to know that you will put out a maniacal level of effort at times with little to no remuneration. That is the thing that throws people, and that's why I say, you know, work on something. You got a job, start your business, put a lot of heart and energy into it, and learn it. Because many of these things takes time. Uh, also, there was an article in the Hustle University, the Facebook group, where the average time a entrepreneur makes their first million is not weeks or months or even a year. It's 11 years. That's the average length of time it takes an entrepreneur to make their first million. Yes, 11, a decade and some change. And what's happening is you have people who are trying to do that because uh, I'll reference the guy that did it with Amazon FBA by himself, did a million in sales. But the other part of that was he was a 20 year veteran of the resale game. So he worked 20 years to do a million and one. I mean, think about it. All of that effort and time and buying and selling and learning and being there and make it, uh, that just prepare him to do what he did in a year. If you're listening to what I'm saying, you got to work. You have to put some stuff out and you have to mentally, you know, just prepare yourself. And um, other things that I'm doing with Hustle University, because uh a lot of crazy stuff is going down. Uh, oh, just just leave my assistant alone. I was looking at some of the emails this morning, and I was, I'm like, no one's ever said anything like that to me. Uh, for you, for those of you who were like, you know, cussing her out, you're off the list. You never have to worry about me emailing you again. Don't worry about it. For those of you trying to get a date, come on. The thirst level is high, is all I got to say. People want to know her Facebook page so they can check her out. <laughs> I will tell you monsters something. You beast. You animals. I knew that. Amy's her real first name, but Cardone's not her real last name. Because I know you. I know my people. <laughs> Don't need you stalk. Do you know how hard it is to find a good assistant? Do you know? I don't need you stalking people. So, leave her alone. Seriously. That is just crazy. You've got, you got business. You want to ask questions? That's cool. But all the flirty, flirty stuff? Come on, man. Come on! <laughs> oh, alright. Anywho, that's really much uh, wrapping this up. Essentially, you have to really, really prepare yourself. Know that being a hustler, entrepreneur, there will be days that you will not make any money. There'll be days that you have worked your ass off and the money's not coming. And then there'll be days you don't do shit and like, bam, five, six orders pop in. You're like, it's all cumulative. You've got to work consistently. This is one of the things that I learned in the storage auction game and it applies to many other businesses. Monday through Friday, I don't care if it rained, I don't care if it snowed, I was out on the auction trail consistently. I had buying profiles, for those of you who don't know, uh, I came up with my own metrics. And this is where I learned that the 10 by 20s, the 10 by 30s, the 10 by 40s, profit wise, did so much better than the 5 by 5s, the 10. I mean, the bigger units just had more bang to the buck. I mean, I would pay, you know, 200 300 400 500 dollars for one of the big boys whereas i paid two three four hundred for one of the smaller ones because people were buying those units based on that they were easier to move versus the value contained therein and that's one of my you know my buying profiles i would go out and i'll explain it to you in this i'll go out 
and uh, I would, you know, do my research, see what was going on, knew who was where, and if it fit my buying profile, I pulled the trigger. If it did not, which took a lot of discipline, sometimes I had to bail before I wanted to because it was getting past uh, the financial controls that I put in play. But when I stuck with my buying profiles, we consistently made money. So the whole thing is you have to have a system. You have to have some way to know what where your money is coming from, how your business generates money. And I just knew. I mean, I could almost like set it like a clock. If I bought 10, 10 by 20s and they were within the pricing controls, we made money. Even if it didn't matter if the units were turkeys, it, it we made money because I was buying within the pricing controls and buying based on buying profiles. This is stuff that I would have never been able to flesh out if I gave up when they got hard and when they tried to run me off uh, the first few months. And that's any business. And many of you just give up too soon because it's getting hard. It's so hard, Glendon. It's so hard. I mean, hey, you know, like I said, I've got a lot of stuff uh, going on at Hustle University. I will tell you, and I'm just going to drop this, um, the first Hustler sale call was awesome. And some unexpected benefits popped out of that call. There's a uh, Jomo. He's got some special skills, and we're going to get together and create a course. And everyone that was on the call was like, "Yeah, do this." So I got to reach out to him, and we're going to put it again. And that's going to be one of the things that if you're doing something special, that's different. And let, let's be real clear: unless it's just some super special resale program, we're not really touching on that because everybody's in resale. Everyone's writing a book about resale. Everyone, no, what he does is different. And if it's different, doesn't mean there are a lot of players there. And if there's not a lot of players, there's more money on the table. Think about that. All right, this is Glendon. And like I said, if you like the video, you love the content, hit that button and donate. I will see you on the good side.